it's going to be a very, very bloody war on the ground. I'm, I'm, I, I, I just cringe to think of, of what's going to happen to the civilian population uh, inside of Gaza over the next, and I think it will be weeks, if not months. Frank Lowenstein, the former U.S. Special Envoy for Middle East Peace, also Senior State Department Advisor for the uh, past President Barack Obama. A good evening to you. Hello, sir. How are you? It's uh, it's good to have you have you here. So the president is on his way off now, back after that brief visit, supporting Israel full-bloodedly was obviously cent- central to President Biden's mission today. And of course, he was horrified by what happened last night, but he would also wouldn't have been relieved to be able to declare his faith in the evidence that this was the result of a Palestinian missile and not an Israeli one. Yeah, I think that was very important for the president to come to the conclusion independently of any information the Israelis provided us. Uh, that in fact it was Palestinian Islamic Jihad that was responsible. And I think he was relying on what our Pentagon told him uh, every bit as much as what the Israelis told him. Yeah, I mean, supporting Israel, it's worth pointing out, isn't it? It's something that Joe Biden feels very deeply, isn't it? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And and I think this was a very difficult decision for the White House to make this trip. They, they were very well aware of the risks uh, that something exactly like this would happen. But I think it comes from the president's heart. I think he really wanted to be there. He wanted to stand side by side. Prime Minister Netanyahu, he wanted to send a very strong, unequivocal signal of support for Israel. He will pay a political price for that uh, in the United States. Uh, and also, I think in the region and 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 more broadly, this is going to have lasting implications for the United States because we now own this war uh, in a way that we haven't in previous Gaza conflicts. So it's 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 a very fraught effort by the president. Yeah, I mean, we're still at an early stage in this crisis. There are still so many unknowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns, to quote a past American defense secretary. After this visit, what do you think mission accomplished would have looked like to the president and his team? Well, I think originally they would have liked to have, uh, in addition to the visit with Israel, obviously the meetings with President Sisi, King Abdullah, and President Abbas. And I think the one thing that they really would focus on in those meetings that they will not now be able to is the situation in the West Bank. So we're all focused on, obviously, Gaza Strip and then in the northern border with Lebanon. But there's been 60 Palestinians killed in the West Bank, and, and the United States government has long been concerned that there's a potential for that to spiral out of control. So I think one of the things he would have spoken about with President Abbas and with others in the region would, how do we keep was how do we keep the situation in, in the West Bank from spinning out of control? So I think mm. that will be a focus going forward. I think there will be a number of phone calls and a number of efforts uh, 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 focused on that particular issue. Yeah, look, you're an expert on the region. You, you have a particular, a particularly, I guess, expert view of what's going on at the moment. In your own judgment, how do you weigh up the risk of escalation in the region, maybe more widely? So I think that there's real risk right now after the, uh, uh, the the hundreds of children were killed in this hospital that there's going to be riots and protests focused on U.S. embassies around the region. I think we've already seen that. Uh, uh, so there's a, there's a, always a danger that that's going to spin out of control. But with respect to Iran, um, my, my sense is that the Iranians don't want a war right now, that Hezbollah doesn't want a war right now, and that they're more likely to be probing and trying to distract Israel and send a political message than they are looking for out-and-out conflict. So I, I think that there's the president's visit has really succeeded in, in mm. sending a very message of deterrence when it comes to the role of Hezbollah and Iran. And was it deterrence, in a particular American deterrence, that, in your view, accounts for what you say is that hesitation, that reluctance to escalate things on the part of Hezbollah or Tehran? Because they're, they are as much in the business of destroying Israel as, as Hamas. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, listen, I, I think that their calculus was probably uh, the same, whether whether the president had gone there or not, in terms of their their lack of desire to really get into a full blown military conflict uh, with Israel. I think that message was only reinforced when the president arrived. But I, I've never thought that the risk of of Hezbollah getting directly involved at the at the behest of Iran was as was as great as others might have been, mm-hmm. uh, just because. I don't see it as being in their interest. And, and historically, the Iranians have a, have a tendency to avoid direct conflict. If you remember the, the, the assassination of, President, of Soleimani, the head of the IRGC, everybody thought there was going to be a massive Iranian reaction. And they waited and waited and bided their time. So my, my sense is that if they're going to engage on this, they'll do it at a, at a time and place of their choosing, uh, but not necessarily right now. Yeah, I mean, just on, on the, 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 the more I don't know, crudely political front, there's an American election coming up at the end of 2024. But the run up to that election is very much underway underway now. What is the nature of the president, the domestic political pressure that Joe Biden is now under when it comes to managing this crisis? Because America has a vital management role in this crisis. Yeah, it's a really good question. And it's a complicated one here in the United States. Uh, obviously, there's many who support Israel here, uh, uh, the many of the Republican Party and, and certainly in the, in the center. So uh, this will go over very well with a certain segment of the population. However, 
with respect to President Biden's political base, which is the, the, the left and the far left, uh, he's going to get a lot of blowback for this. There's a lot of outrage in the progressive community. I mm. think a lot of folks that, who, who have that perspective see the situation of the Palestinians similar to that of black Americans here in the United States. They're very sympathetic to the cause, and they see the United States uh, standing behind Israel, which is obviously uh, uh, the occupation itself is illegal. Uh, and, and, a, and a crime as far as they're concerned. This particular uh, level of civilian casualties has a tendency to get people very, very upset and angry. So I think there will be there will be some political benefits to President Biden, but there's also political costs here with his base, and, and, and it remains to be seen how that will play out. Yeah, I wonder, just your opinion, for, for, as someone who knows Israel very well and Israeli thinking at a time of, uh, of crisis, after what happened last night, do you think that explosion at the hospital, it gave us a, we all managed to peer, didn't we, into a very dark abyss yesterday and looking at the aftermath of that, the number of people dead. Do you think that incident yesterday will prompt Israel to be more careful about limiting civilian casualties in the future, even though they deny responsibility persuasively for what happened yesterday? Will they be more careful now? Yeah, I, I think that that on a, on a day to day basis, their attitude about this would be we had nothing to do with it. So we have no behavior, behavior to change as a result of this. But I do think that this really brings home in a very stark way the cost Israel pays in terms of international public opinion. Yeah. Uh, when there's these kind of civilian casualties. So the short answer to your question is, yes, I think it will result in a heightened awareness of it, uh, on the behalf of Israelis of the risk they face w when there's these kind of massive humanitarian calamities. So, yeah, I think it will have an impact. And I recognise this next question, my last question, is quite literally unanswerable, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What do you imagine the end game here looks like? Well, I think that it's going to be a very, very bloody war on the ground. I'm a, I'm, I, I, I just cringe to think of, of what's going to happen to the civilian population uh, inside of Gaza over the next, and I think it will be weeks, if not months. Um, then the real question is, w what comes afterwards? And I think for the Israelis, my hope is, uh, uh, that they'll take an oppor this opportunity to step back and say, okay, listen, this this occupation, the, the blockade of Gaza is just not a sustainable policy. We can't continue to ignore the Palestinian problem that so many Israelis have done for a very long time now. So I'm hoping it'll open some eyes on that end. On the Palestinian side, now that if, if Hamas is out of the picture, that opens up a lot of different options in terms of having a Palestinian election, having a unified Palestinian government uh, that were impossible when Hamas was still on the scene. The big challenge there is, of course, that the Palestinian Authority is completely dysfunctional. They, they, they barely project any power outside of Ramallah. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done to strengthen the Palestinian Authority if, if, if they want to take advantage of this opportunity, you know, to give Palestinians a voice in their leadership and to unify the Palestinian electorate. All right. It's, it's really in interesting and valuable to get your perspective and your, your thoughts there, Frank. Thank you. That's Frank Lowenstein there, the former American special envoy for Middle East peace.